You know, another one of my favorite content creators is Nick Crowley. I know he has a couple million subscribers, but he kind of seems like the type of guy that should have far more. He really does go in depth in a lot of the research that he does for his videos. He just doesn't throw shit out there hoping that it sticks. Um, so I wanted to check out this, um, these darkest moments of YouTube. Many of them I have seen. Um, and I don't mean to be putting out videos that are so macabre. Uh, I know true crime, you know, is a, a people love true crime stories. Uh, but I, I, you know, these videos for everybody is a little off. Like, what the hell is going on? And I remember watching half of this video, the first one that we're going to watch. They're both, part one and part two are both 55 minutes long, so I'm going to cut them in half. Um, but just weird stuff. I mean, I don't know what goes through people's minds. They're just, they're just a lot of weird people out there. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check out his video. He deserves it. Go show him some love by liking, subscribing, doing whatever you can. All right, here we go. There is it. Here we go. Missing 100 million subscribers. Really bizarre behavior on her YouTube channel. Videos posted on YouTube. So right off the bat, he's uh, did this uh, in conjunction with... Uh, Nexpo and, uh, God, I can't remember the one that they just flashed. And Disturbing, both of whom I'm uh, um, subscribed to. Sorry to the site. Oh, shit, sorry. The Dark Side of YouTube, a place that has become an obsession of mine throughout the years, with the vast majority of my uploads being centered around the most disturbed content this site has to offer. And throughout these years, I've accumulated so many topics, ranging from the bizarre to the downright terrifying, that I decided to finally put them all together into an iceberg so that I can properly share them with all of you. Most of these will be unique to my channel, but you'll probably recognize a few topics, especially if you've watched my videos before. And in honor of the spooky season, I reached out to a few fellow creators to help me out in taking you guys to the very depths of this site. So without further ado, join me as we journey down YouTube's Darkest Iceberg. Level 1, Clear Skies. For this layer, I'll be taking you guys through some of the videos and channels that truly terrified me when I was growing up, way before I ever dreamed of becoming a YouTuber. And from there, I'll have some friends join me in walking you through the following levels, which, rather than being ranked by obscurity, will instead get darker and darker as we go, at least in my own personal opinion. Until the very end, when I'll close the video off with the content here on YouTube that truly terrifies me today, which I consider to be the darkest on the entire platform. The Real Screams of Hell This classic video from 2011 reportedly shares an audio clip from a Soviet experiment in which a team of researchers drilled a hole as far as they could into the surface of the Earth. However, upon reaching 14.4 kilometers, the drill suddenly broke through into what seemed to be a large pocket of open space and air. Immediately, the temperature at the site of the drill tip rose to a staggering 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. But that okay, so I want you guys to know one thing. Um, and I know not everybody's, you know, very... Uh, I mean, there's only so much that we could learn and what's fact and what's not. But uh, what he's talking about, I've actually played on my channel because it was on Coast to Coast AM. Rest in peace, Art Bell, one of the best. Um, he had, I mean, the whole same story. They were trying to uh, drill the deepest hole mankind ever could. And as they started to get closer and closer to the ore, to the core of the earth, everything, you know, would start melting and it was just way too damn hot. And so... The story said that they had lowered a microphone in there to, you know, listen for tectonic movements um, of the, you know, tectonic plate movements. And instead they captured, you know, what would be the sounds of hell. But it's completely false. It actually comes from a 1970s movie and where uh, that is, uh, that's where the, the sounds come from. But very fitting and a very good job whoever decided to use this as a, a creepypasta.
But that was far from the most unusual discovery, as immediately the scientists began to hear the faint sound of screaming emanating from the small opening in the earth. So curiously, they lowered a heat-resistant microphone into the hole, and this is what they recorded. And uh, I warn you, what you are about bell. to hear is very disturbing indeed. According to the video, this audio shows the persistent screaming from those trapped in hell. And though certainly very creepy, the video is really nothing more than a fabrication inspired by a hoax of a similar manner. Interestingly though, the Soviets did actually perform a similar experiment in which they drilled 12 miles below the Earth's crust, but nothing supernatural was ever recorded. Marina Mordegard Glesgorv this entry was actually my first encounter with a YouTube mystery back when I was probably around 11 years old. And needless to say, it led to countless sleepless Sorry. nights. The story revolves around a 20 second video posted to YouTube that showed a man sitting and staring expressionless into the camera, before the shot suddenly cuts to a man smiling nefariously for the final two seconds. Aside from being slightly off-putting, the supposed full version of this video is said to be cursed and have horrific effects on whoever views it. According to the legend, this is only part of the actual video. The full video lasts two minutes and was removed by YouTube after 153 people who viewed the video gouged their eyes out and mailed them to YouTube's main office in San Bruno. The video itself was only viewed by one YouTube staff member who started screaming after 45 seconds. The man is under constant sedatives and is apparently unable to recall what he saw. The other people who were in the room with him said all they could hear was a high-pitched drilling noise, but none of them dared to look at the screen. Supposed videos of this full version have found their way to YouTube over the years, and though they too are quite creepy, it's not hard to tell that this is just another internet myth. They even went on to identify who this man actually was, though I wish someone would have told that to 11-year-old me. Levitating Girl in the Woods While on a walk in an unnamed forest in Russia, a man's dog- You know, anything can be... Uh... Well, I started that that off wrong you know special effects can do wonders and it's always so hard to get through the bullshit to the actual truth and this is one of those videos that for me i thought that's a little odd but you know it's not that hard to get a couple people involved and you know post-production start editing and make it look like well make it look like what he's about to capture so i don't know you guys give me your opinion dog suddenly bolts off uncharacteristically running away from its owner and failing to listen to his commands and upon chasing him deeper into the woods the owner comes face to face with a bizarre scene Tarzan, come here. In front of him appeared to be a young girl levitating in the air next to her mother, and upon the cameraman's dog barking, the child comes back down to the ground and runs off, disappearing into the woods. This is another one of those videos that always gave me the creeps back in the day, and watching it back today, it's definitely still a bit scary, but realistically, it's probably nothing more than a hoax. Marina Joyce this entry refers to one of the more bizarre moments in YouTube's history, as rumors began swirling back in 2016 that popular YouTuber Marina Joyce had been kidnapped and was being forced to make videos. The concern arose as the 19-year-old creator, who was typically bubbly and full of life, began acting differently. In her videos, she seemed to be incredibly nervous, with her eyes constantly shifting off camera, as if someone was directing her on what to do. In one instance, you could even see a finger of someone behind the scenes pointing to where she should stand. And the bizarre moments continued from there, as viewers noticed an influx of bruises on her arms, a moment where she appears to whisper, help me, and a gun in the background of one of her videos. During the time, the internet was fixated on this case, which eventually led to the police doing a wellness check on the girl, who clarified that she was safe and she supposedly wasn't actually kidnapped. 
Marina eventually explained that her change in personality was simply due to her escalating depression, though to this day many believe that she staged the whole ordeal. Angel of Death This video was the very first scary video that I ever saw on YouTube, when my friend showed it to me in his basement all the way back in 2008, and honestly it left me traumatized and sleepless for weeks, and I still remember it to this day. The video, which I sadly can't show due to age restriction, shows a soccer match in which a player by the name of Abdulrahman al Shuaibi is accidentally kicked in the head by an opponent, and following this, something extremely disturbing happens to him. First, he repeatedly falls to the ground and then springs to his feet in a shockingly unnatural manner, and once he finally finds his footing, he begins jogging backwards, as if he had no control over his body. He finally comes to a stop as he falls to his knees, and his body bends back in the most chilling way possible, to which he then falls completely limp to the ground, landing face first and supposedly dying right there on the field. This video is actually very real and is incredibly shocking to watch, but thankfully, al Shuabi would not actually lose his life. Instead, he suffered from a major seizure as a result of the kick to the head, causing his movements to become completely involuntary. But he would quickly go on to make a full recovery and would actually play in the team's very next match. That's good. CERN Sacrifice This video taken outside the CERN Geneva campus shows a group of hooded men, a couple now this one was completely 100% a prank. And they even came back and said, uh, the, the higher ups were like, no, we're not gonna be, you know, allowing any more of this stuff to be happening because the statue was gifted to CERN and uh, they were just effing around with people. So I, that one's factual because even the team leader of the CERN project said, you know, yeah, we, we told them no more of this kind of BS, so. Accompanied by one woman gathering beneath a large statue of the Hindu god Shiva, the men then surround the woman who lies on the ground in the middle as one man approaches her with a knife and proceeds to stab her, much to the shock of the person recording the ordeal. But unsurprisingly, this video too was later proven to be a hoax, with CERN later admitting that some of their scientists had been the ones to carry out the prank while they were attending the campus. Blank Room Soup Perhaps the most infamous creepy video in YouTube's entire history, this strange clip shows a man feverishly eating a bowl of soup in an all-white room. A strange figure in a horrifying costume then approaches the man from behind and begins to console him before another figure appears in frame. The two then rub the man's back as he begins to cry, while off camera you can- Yo, sorry about the long pause. I had to come and find my beanie because it is cold as hell here in Colorado. We got a lot of, well, not a lot, but typically we don't see like any accumulation on the streets of snow until about maybe end of November, early December, somewhere around there. And uh, yeah, we got quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of, you know, snow for the streets to make it a pain in the ass. And then as you see, only 36 degrees right here. So I'm like, yep, I need my beanie. So without further ado. Let's continue the story. You can hear the faint sound of laughter. <laughs> the origin of this video today still seems to be a mystery, but the costumes themselves were found to have been invented by an artist named Raymond Percy, who is best known for his work on Wreck-It Ralph and Zootopia. To this day, he denies any involvement and claims that the costumes were stolen and used for God knows what. However, it does seem more likely that this is just some kind of art project, to which Percy was involved with at least in some capacity. But because he has never fully confessed to it, for now we can only make assumptions. Lost in the Catacombs This entry refers to a VHS tape supposedly discovered within the Paris Catacombs by an urban explorer. On it, the footage shows a man casually filming their journey into the claustrophobic maze of death before their behavior starts to change. For unknown reasons, the man begins to panic and starts to sprint through the dark catacombs before dropping his camera in a puddle and running off into the darkness, never to return. If this clip is real, it's very likely that whoever was behind the camera suffered from some sort of anxiety attack due to the claustrophobic and just overall terrifying nature of the catacombs. 
Those strange symbols and unexplained noises in the background have led others to point to more supernatural explanations. Either way, if it is to be believed, it's likely whoever this man was did not survive the trip. However, most people nowadays believe that this was nothing more than a hoax, potentially put on by an old TV show called Scary But True, where the footage was first aired. And though this is most likely the case, it's interesting to note that the footage does actually show the inside of the catacombs, meaning that if they really did fake this clip, then they definitely went all out for it. Before we go any further down this iceberg, I have to first bring up something that is truly haunting. Body odor. That is why I highly recommend today's sponsor. Percent off on orders in the description. Tier 2. Tip of the iceberg. 00390. 00390 refers to a YouTube channel that has been active for over half a decade and continues to post to this day. There are many disturbing videos on this YouTube channel that point to its creator seemingly being some sort of kidnapper and potentially even a serial killer. Though in reality, this doesn't appear to be true. Rather, 00390 seems to be instead an ARG, as some of its most infamous videos were actually taken from completely separate sources. And overall, it seems to be more of an art project than anything. But at the end of the day, we really don't know for sure what its origins are. Blood Soup, Svartsapa, 1995. Svartsapa, 1995 is a low-res six-minute YouTube video with less than a thousand views, 818 at the time of writing. The video begins with what seems to be a sketchy blood drive taking place in an unknown location, where all of the blood collected is put into one big pot. The ingredients for a dish known as Svartsapa are then flashed on the screen, which include the word blood, the Swedish word for blood. We then see the blood taken from the participants mixed in a bowl with the rest of the recipe to create what is essentially human blood soup. The camera then cuts to a scene within a pub where the soup is being served and then eaten by a table full of people. While it's quite uncomfortable to watch and leaves us with many questions, the video is actually nothing more than an art project carried out by a man named Pelé Torsen. Though that doesn't mean that it wasn't all fake, as part of this performance actually did entail eating the actual soup, which is more disgusting than anything else. New DPRK New DPRK is a channel that was created back in 2019. I'm not going to lie, that almost gave me like an upchuck because I'm like, that is fucking sick. What is wrong with people? I don't get it. Supposedly shows what life is like in North Korea. Each video paints the country as a utopia, filled with happy citizens and a thriving economy, which is quite the contrast to what most of us know about the region. And that's entirely by design. And I can't help it. Fake fruit? Everything here is fake? <laughs> I can't do it verbatim, but just basically the overall, um, you know, point to, uh, God, what is the movie called again? I can't remember the name of the movie. Shit, that's going to bother me. Let me just... Oh my goodness, it's gonna bother me. Wow, the, my dude's been busy here. Oh, the, the interview, that's it. So, when he's like, ladies and gentlemen, Kim just sharded himself. 
No, I didn't. It was that guy. <laughs> Great movie. As in actuality, the channel was quite literally created by the North Korean government. <laughs> This entire page was set up as a way to spread propaganda to the rest of the world, a facade to mask the true conditions of the country, whose citizens are subjected to an incredibly harsh existence. And overall, it's very off-putting seeing how normal some of these videos are, despite how dark their reality is behind the scenes. Bizarre Fetishes this is a strange one. YouTube is an extremely diverse platform that is home to all sorts of niche communities. Most are fairly normal, but the deeper you dig, the stranger and darker they seem to become. For example, take a look at this YouTube channel called Amputees. All of its videos are uploaded of people who have had amputations, along with a favorites playlist, all containing dozens of other clips showing similar content. Even more unusual, many of these clips have hundreds of thousands of views on them, leading to the question, why? Well, this is actually an account that seems to be dedicated to some sort of amputee fetish, with a select group of people consuming this material in a sexual way. And though there's nothing wrong with finding someone with an amputation attractive, this fetish seems to go a bit deeper than that, as on this page are videos of actual amputation surgeries, which are also being viewed sexually. Kanye West Suicide Song I cannot fucking stand Kanye West. You know, when, he, when I first heard Through the Wire, I thought, wow, here's an upcoming artist remind you working in the music industry i wasn't big on hip-hop but that's what actually i was assigned to as an a and rep before i became a co-executive of another record label and um i remember uh through the wire came out and then also welcome to the good life because i used to love i used to watch entourage religiously and you know the crew needed to get to france uh for the viewing of um uh, Vinny Chase's character, uh, Pablo Escobar, and uh, Kanye West is there, and he, like, you know, they all know each other and stuff in the, in the program, in the series, and he gives them a ride, and when that song started off with, you know, everything that was going on, I was like, damn, that was like the perfect, almost the way that I say, like, I love how the music kicks in at the very end of Karate Kid Part 1, like that ominous, and then, you know, you start hearing everything else right before he goes into his crane kick. Like, I love the buildup of songs when it's either beginning something or ending something. And I thought, what a fitting song that the Kanye West song did for the entourage, you know, with them taking off and headed to France. Then all of a sudden, my dude became crazy. It's like, you know, he's an attention whore, but I've seen when, you know, people, paparazzi and all that, like, I, I, I can't walk in a man's shoes, so I don't know what that's like. But, you know, you're out here doing your damned hardest to get fucking attention. You know, wearing, you know, there's nothing wrong with wearing a face mask, but wearing a full black, you know, mask at the Super Bowl, like, why? I mean, it's kind of like the rainbow haired guy, you know, we there you used to see back in the nineties at baseball games and all that stuff, you know, trying to spread as much as John three sixteen. you know, or Kanye walking in these boots that look like they belong to a fucking 14 foot giant. I mean, he is one person that thrives and just craves and wants attention so bad and when he doesn't get it, he does anything he possibly can think of to do it. Take, for instance, who's the one who found his ass? Who's the one who's helped him get it to the position that he's at now? Jay-Z. Now he's going back talking a little bit of shit about Jay-Z and Beyonce. You know, oh, they could do them and they can be controlled, but I'm going to do me, this and that. That's what I had read. And it's unfortunate, too, because I only see shit about him in my news feeds. I've never looked him up other than when I heard through the wire and welcome to the good life because I didn't know they were this, you know, both done by Kanye West right away. I only knew that the good life was done by Kanye West. Cause of course he makes appearance in entourage, 
But through the wire, I mean, I loved that song. And I'm like, oh, this artist is going to blow up. Well, he's blown up, but he's also fucked a lot of shit up. And he's also made a lot of money. And I'm glad to see now that, you know, a lot of these bigger companies are starting to see him for what he is and dropped his ass. Because he just seems like one of those toxic, cancerous pieces of shit that you don't want around, you know, your label if you're trying to make something big. Yes, he is very talented. I'll give him that. But other than that, he's honestly just cancerous. The Kanye West Suicide song alludes to a leaked track by Kanye called Never See Me Again. The song features a sample of Futari Dake No Ceremony by Yukiko Okada, a Japanese singer who committed suicide in the 80s at the age of 21, who Kanye had been studying even going as far as moving to Japan where he would write this song. And to go along with this dark sample, Kanye's lyricism seems downtrodden and almost defeated, repeating the lines, it'll be a long time before you ever see me again. Adding to the story, this came during a time in Kanye's life where his mental health had supposedly reached a breaking point and was said to be the lowest time of his life. And given the lyrics, the sample, and the context within his own personal life, it's believed that this song was ultimately meant to be a suicide note, which he would release directly before taking his life. Thankfully, this would never happen. However, the song itself would leak to YouTube years later, where it is now referred to as his suicide song, as his lyrics seem to confirm his intentions. Monkey Hate We mentioned the bizarre fetish rabbit hole that certain YouTube channels and playlists can lead you down. But one of the most baffling and disturbing examples of this is without a doubt the trend of monkey hate on YouTube. There are countless videos and channels dedicated to this unusual trend. But essentially, the monkey. content typically shows a monkey or multiple monkeys being tortured in various ways. And though that is sickening enough, the comments are truly what makes Yo, for real. Anybody who's listened to me long enough knows there's fucking a lot of things. There's a couple of things in particular that I just cannot stand for. And that is the abu abuse of children and the abuse of animals. I just can't do it. And anybody who does do that shit, that's all you are. It's just a piece of shit in my book. So, you know, I know sometimes things could be a bit of a nuisance or a problem and they may not have the funds to call somebody in to, you know, say, hey, you know, we're having a problem here with, you know, all these monkeys doing this, doing that, attacking people. Can you get, you know, send somebody to help us? I know not all countries are set up like that, but I, like I said, there, there's other ways to take care of it than just killing them. Which I imagine that's where he's going with this. I mean, monkey hate. Make it horrifying. As users glorify this treatment as saying things like, ha 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 ha, it's getting everything it deserves. Or give it to me, I'll give it a good home. Why this type of content is popular and gets the comments it does is not fully understood, but Theories range from it being another sort of twisted fetish to it being coded racism. Either way, it truly accounts for one of the darkest sections on all of YouTube. This shit pisses Much me off like too. Monkey Hate, this entry deals with a similarly depraved form of animal abuse. Though this has been documented frequently across Nick's channel and will be further highlighted in a video coming later this year. So, for the sake of brevity, I won't go deeper into this. Taunting Terminally Ill Girl Sometimes, people will be evil for seemingly no good reason, and this stands out as one of the most inexplicably mean-spirited events ever documented on the web. Kathleen Edwards was a girl who had fallen terminally ill about a decade ago, with the same disease, Huntington's, that took the life of her mother at age 24. But whereas nothing seems more deserving of sympathy than a terminally ill child, not everyone viewed the situation in the same manner. And their neighbor, Jennifer Petkov, was instead actively rooting for the death of the child. 
apparently stemming from her kid not being invited to a party at Kathleen's grandmother's house. Petkov went on a tirade, first posting a disturbing image of the Grim Reaper holding Kathleen's dead mother to the web. Then she posted a skull and crossbones on Facebook, but instead of a regular skull, it was Kathleen's face. And Kathleen's grandmother even said that there was an incident in which Petkov stood on her front porch and yelled when Kathleen was outside, I wish that that kid would hurry up and die with the lady going as far as to deck their vehicle out as a hearse. Her dispute features a hearse hauling a coffin. Kathleen's family and neighbors say it's been used to harass Kathleen and her mom before her death. And seeing an interview with her wow. and her lawyer, it seems like there is absolutely no remorse. Have you learned a lesson? Yes. And that is? To keep my opinions and my views to myself. In the years since, it appears that Kathleen Edwards has sadly passed away from her condition, meaning some of the precious final years of her life were unfortunately spent dealing with this unnecessary and disturbed harassment. Karma has a way of coming back around, so that bitch is going to get hers. Harassment. Harrison O'Kinney rescue footage. Harrison O'Kinney was a cook aboard the Jascone 4 a Nigerian tugboat, when he experienced what would be best described as a real-life nightmare. While crazy. getting ready at 5 a.m. in the ship's bathroom, a giant wave struck the ship, tearing a hole in the hull and causing the vessel to sink beneath the water. Ten of the 12 crew members on that ship were killed, but Okini had miraculously survived with the only problem being that he was trapped in the ship's bathroom and the ship was sinking quickly. Unable to escape, the man accepted his fate before something miraculous happened. Could you imagine that? Being put in a position where you know, like, man, this is it. You know, I'm going to be dying here real soon. I mean, could you fathom that? Ah. A small air bubble had formed in the ship's bathroom where Harrison just so happened to be. And despite the ship now being at the bottom of the ocean, Harrison was still able to breathe. This went on for an astonishing 60 hours when he was finally discovered by a rescue crew <laughs> that was only the, coming to the ship. The diver got uh, <laughs> the sh living shit scared out of him because he reached for him and grabbed him and the diver didn't know what to think because... You know, everybody thought all, all is lost. But to identify and collect bodies. On the shoulder. Okay. All right. All right. With the rescue being caught on camera and later uploaded to YouTube, you can see the shock in O'Kinney's eyes. A man who must have all but given up hope while waiting for the oxygen in the air bubble to run out. O'Kinney went on to survive and eventually be released from the hospital to live a normal life, though he has sworn to never go out to sea again. So right there, we'll stop it for now. We'll make part one, and then the next one will be part two. So uh, let me know what you think if you're even interested in this. Um, drop a comment. And, uh, yeah, I will be back very shortly. Until then, peace.